What's up, y'all? Today we're going to dive into the Super 73 C1X motorcycle and see how close we can get to predicting the performance of this bike based on the info that we have from Super 73. I want to give you guys some info that maybe you wouldn't have come up with on your own. Stay with me, y'all. This is going to be good. So in case you missed it, the C1X motorcycle was debuted by Super 73 in Los Angeles on March 15th. The concept here is a compact, street-legal electric motorcycle made for a single rider, ri single rider and with a curb weight of less than 300 pounds, a top speed of 75 miles an hour, and a range of 100 miles of city riding. And rather than just make a high-powered electric bicycle, they decided to go with a lower-powered motorcycle that hopefully fits in the price range of five to $8,000. Otherwise, I think they're gonna have a hard time selling the bike. So in this video, we're gonna estimate the performance of the C1X based on the specs that we've been given by Super 73, and then we're gonna use a little bit of physics and we're just, we're just, we're gonna figure some stuff out. We are also going to simulate the C1X running the World Motorcycle Test Cycle, which is a standardized model for motorcycles that represents data for city and highway riding. Now this data is agreed upon by basically the world. We did this for the Saunders Metacycle in an older video if you're interested in seeing more of this. Okay, so let's talk about the simulation inputs. This is the information that we've gotten from Super 73. So we've got a curb weight of less than 300 pounds. So let's choose the worst case scenario of 300 pounds max and say 300 pounds plus a 200 pound rider. So that's gonna be about 227 kilograms of mass. We know that the top speed listed is 75 plus miles per hour. Aerodynamics, we're gonna use a standard motorcycle model, very similar to that which we use for the Saunders Metacycle. Uh, this is just the good old drag equation with a CDA value of 0.7. Got 15 inch wheels, so let's use a tire diameter of 25, 25, 25.7 inches in diameter. And this is based on Dunlop D404 tires. All right, now we plug that shit into this Python script I made and let it do the rest of the work. Calculating, 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 calculating. Ugh, man, I should not have taken those shots. Okay, so let's take a look at the C1X running the WMTC Part 1 for city riding. The speeds in this part are less than 40 miles an hour total, and we have an average of 24 miles per hour. The total distance ridden here is going to be 2.52 miles with a total energy of 113 watt hours or 0.113 kilowatt hours used. This puts our watt hours per mile number at around 44.84 watt hours per mile, which means that if we wanted to get 100 miles of range, we'd need a battery with an energy storage of around 4.5 kilowatt hours. Using a standard 72 volt system that gives us around 62.5 amp hours of capacity. And then using a value of 210 watt hours per kilogram of an 18650-B1 cell or the newer 21700E1 cell, this weight would be roughly 48 pounds Pounds, plus or minus a couple of pounds. So the weight of the cells plus all the materials to build the battery pack is going to be well over 50 pounds. I believe that they're going to design a pack for four to five kilowatt hours based on this 100 mile range of city riding claim. Book it, I'm telling you. You wanna bet on futures? I, I'll bet money on this. <laughs> I'm not gonna bet money on this. I'll bet, I'll bet this shirt, okay? So the first person that claims this shirt when I'm wrong, I'll, I'll take it off on camera and I'll mail it to you. Now, what about the entire WMTC part one, two, and three, including highway riding, right? The to all right, all right, let's run it. So this was a total distance of 18 miles and a total energy of 1.87 kilowatt hours used. So if you were to ride continuously at this mixed cycle using an average of 104 watt hours per mile, woo, you'd get a total range of 43 miles with a 4.5 kilowatt hour battery pack. So if you're the kind of rider that lives in a rural area or you know the more extreme suburbs and you've got interstate riding to do before you ever hit the city where you're headed, okay, you're gonna expect half of that 100 mile range or less. Now what about the power? How much power are we using? I don't know why I drink so much whiskey to make these videos, but it gets me through them every time. Super 73 gave us a top speed of 75 plus miles per hour. So it's pretty easy to determine what kind of peak power we need to hit those speeds. Check out this graph I've plotted to show power versus speed. The power required at any given speed is proportional to the square of the speed. Aerodynamic drag is your biggest enemy for power suckage, okay? It takes so much power to travel at these higher speeds. We can see here that to hit 75 miles an hour, you need about 17.6 kilowatts of power. Um, so if you were cruising continuously at that speed, you'd be using 17.6 kilowatts continuously. The big question that comes into play here is, does the manufacturer expect you to be able to cruise at these speeds or hit these speeds as a top speed, all right? 
with the peak power of the motor. If you want to be able to cruise at this top speed, then you're gonna need like a 20 kilowatt motor because you're not gonna run the motor at its peak rating all the continuously, you can't. So yeah, you need a 20 kilowatt plus motor. I'm looking at their website and it says, join the journey. Once you reserve your place in line, they want your thoughts. You give your input. You can join them on the road to production and collaborate with R&D and then see it before anyone else. So uh, if you want this performance, tell them. Tell them that you want the capability to perform to these specs. Okay, zero to 60 time. This is, this is popular, everybody wants this. It's tough to say without getting more info from the manufacturer. We've got no torque specs, we got nothing yet, but it better be sub 10 seconds. Uh, Saunders claims six seconds for the Metacycle, but I still doubt that based on the torque and power specs that they give. So I'm gonna wait to do the zero to 60 time until a future video when we've got a little more information. Okay, so back to the range. So the claimed 100 mile range is at city speeds, and that's possible with a 4.5 kilowatt hour or larger battery as we determined. Now, as you found out, this will be a lot less range, you know, at higher speeds. So an extreme example of this would be cruising continuously at 70 miles an hour, right? You're on the interstate, let's say. You'd use 14.5 kilowatts of power continuously, which with a 4.5 kilowatt hour battery would net you around 22 miles of range. So from, from full to empty. So how about the drivetrain? Let's talk about the drivetrain with this bike. So it's pretty cool to see the electric motor mounted inside of the swing arm, which opens up more room inside of the chassis for batteries and electronics. Uh, this seems a bit like a missed opportunity though for a concentric swing arm design where the motor is a stressed member mounted at the center of the swing arm pivot point, all right? And since the motor isn't attached to the frame on the other side of the suspension, this is technically unsprung weight similar to that of a hub motor. But whatever, it shouldn't matter. I mean, you're gonna have plenty of torque probably, so it. So how about the motor that they're using? What brand is it? What What is it? It's tough to tell from the pictures. I see their name is branded on the, on the motor, and I know that several manufacturers will do that for their clients. Um, I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that maybe it's a Golden Motor HPM-10KW that they're pushing up to 20 kilowatts in peak bursts. I just, it's, it's hard. I don't have enough information to decide. Uh, what else? So will we get ABS on this bike? Probably, if they're smart. I mean, it can't cost that much to add some cheap wheel speed sensors and software to implement region braking and or electromagnetic braking through the caliper, I, I hope. And about the aesthetics, I mean, this is a hot topic of debate. A lot of contention here. Uh, you know, it's really not my place to comment on the looks of the bike, as that's more of an opinion than hard data. My job here is to give you good info that you can use to estimate the performance of this bike. I'll say that it looks very interesting. Uh, it's definitely gonna turn heads. And I expect them to change the turn signals and the taillight, similar to what Saunders had to do uh, once DOT compliance became a factor. So expect some minor aesthetic changes, hopefully nothing too drastic, unless you want it to be drastic. But again, give them your feedback, give them your input, they're asking for it. So how about the charging announcement? So they, they said level two quick charging is available with an 80% charge in less than an hour. That's pretty cool. Uh, will this be included in the base model or available as an add-on accessory similar to the Metacycle? Uh, if this is included, expect that to bump the price up uh, right off the bat because that's a lot of power electronics and cost that's going to be associated with the level two quick charging. And lastly, I will say that I believe Super 73 is handling this uh, motorcycle situation very well. Um, the fact that they're going to consider the consumer, the reservation holders, and listen to their input and use that as feedback into the design, a lot of manufacturers could, could take a lesson in that. So if they truly follow through and integrate that as a part of the design process, um, that's gonna be huge. And that's gonna make a lot of people very happy. Well, thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, go ahead and smash that like button. All right, go ahead and subscribe for future content. All right, I appreciate you being here. You know, if you want more content like this in the future, let me know, leave a comment, leave some feedback. Let me know what you liked. Let me know what you didn't like. I hope that you all have a wonderful day and most importantly, be safe out there.